guys. Welcome back to Actually Adultish. My name is Kaylin, one of your hosts. And I'm Christina, your other host. And Nina is gone again today. She's uh, working. Yeah. You know, just on set. Actually, she said no. She's doing a fitting, right? Yeah, costume fitting. Yeah, so she's cooler than us. But big thanks to everybody who has subscribed so far. It means the world to us. And everybody who has left a rating and review on iTunes and Stitcher, we love you. Also, thanks to people who are sending in questions and topics. We really like to hear your feedback, and it's really helpful. So keep sending those in. You can send them in to actuallyadultish at gmail.com, or you can go on our website, actuallyadultish.com, and you could submit them there, and they can be anonymous, and it can be a party, and yeah, we like to hear from you. So today, we're really excited because we have a holistic health coach coming on the air yeah so her name is kimberly petrosino and she's the author of the small change solution a 52 step guide to getting that naturally healthy lifestyle you want and also secrets of a happy healthy working girl so we are really excited to talk to her we both we we all read secrets of a happy healthy working girl and what did you think? I really liked it. I thought it was useful. And even as a college student, there's lots of stuff in there that you can use. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, it was short, sweet, to the point. Had a lot Super of... Super quick read. Yeah. I like things that are very just like straightforward. Yeah. And that was it. No nonsense. And she gives a lot of really good advice. It's just about just literally like being happier, like shifting mindsets. Like really little things too. Yeah. And it's so important. So we're really excited to talk to her today. And we are going to call her on Skype and get her on the line. Hi, Kimberly. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We're good. So we will. I don't know if you'll be able to recognize our voices, but I'm Christina. (laughs) And I'm Kaylin. Hi, Christina and Kaylin was the other one. Kaylin, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're, we're so excited to be talking to you. I'm so excited too. This is awesome. Yeah. So we got, um, we just did a little intro and we told our listeners about you. Okay, cool. But why don't you like start off and just kind of, we'll have you tell us about yourself and like how you got to where you are today. Okay. So I basically, I've been uh, working in an office environment for a long time. And when I was going through nutrition school, because I was getting my certification to become a health coach, I kind of started looking at everyone and everything through the lens of the techni- techniques that I was learning in school. Yeah. Um, and I, what I started noticing was that the majority of the conversations I was hearing were just strings of complaints and like weekend countdowns. Like... <laughs> He would say like, oh, hi, how are you? And the response would always be like, okay, only two more days until Friday, <laughs> like something yeah. like that That's all so the true. time. And then from a nutrition standpoint, like I started noticing that the rewards for like a great quarter or something like that always came in the form of a pizza party or an ice cream party or something else really unhealthy. And that's when I decided that I wanted to start using my nutrition education to shift the mindsets of my coworkers and cubicle creatures everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, like one thing that upset me the most is that people spent the whole week counting down to Friday and then the whole weekend upset that it's almost Monday. So I made true. it you know, my mission to get people to appreciate that there's something good about every day of the week, you know, not just Saturday. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> so, and then, so tell us about um, like your books. So my my first book is called um, The Small Change Solution, A 52-Step Guide to Getting the Naturally Healthy Lifestyle That You Want. And it's sort of a general lifestyle book, and it really follows the journey that I took in my health um, without even realizing it. I started um, making all these small changes first to you know my physical fitness. I started running when I realized how really out of shape I was. And then I started cleaning up my diet. And then when I started losing weight and it became easier to run... I started doing it more and then I started cleaning up my diet more. So it like really went hand in hand and one small change sort of inspired another. So that's where the book came from. Yeah. That's amazing. And then, then, so, so you, you ended up quitting the office job, right? 
No, I'm actually still at the office job. Oh, and really? I'm sort of like the office health guru. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's Which is so fun. Funny. That's so funny. But so, and then you're doing health coaching as well. Yeah. Okay, that's amazing. I like how you you can do both. I, I mean, health coaching keeps me sane. It really does. It's like my just fun. I don't want to say hobby because it's more than a hobby, but it's, it's sort of like my my sanctuary. Yeah, your passion. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, fun fact. That's actually like what I'm planning on doing after I graduate. Really? Yeah. So. Oh, that's amazing. I, yeah, I'm excited. I like talking to you, so I can hear. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we both like we both read um, Secrets of a Happy Healthy Working Girl, <laughs> and we both really loved it. Thank so you. we wanted to like ask you some questions relating to what you talked about in that. Yeah, absolutely. So the first question is you mentioned that the first thing you do in the morning can set the tone for your entire day. So yeah. what is your idea of a perfect morning? Well, the the important thing about having a morning routine is that like everyone should definitely have one, but it should be a reflection of you. So there's no one morning routine that's going to suit everybody. Like, I remember when I first started health coaching, I thought I had to do yoga and drink green tea every single day. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, it's great for people, but it's not really what works for me. You know, I don't love yeah. green tea. I don't love getting up and going to yoga class, especially in the morning. <laughs> um, so doing those things first thing in the morning for me wouldn't really help me start my day in a way that was positive for me. Positive, but just not for me. So what I do is I just make sure I give myself at least an hour in the morning before I have to be anywhere, take my time drinking my coffee, um, I eat breakfast always, read, relax, um, and that works for me because if I were rushing out the door every morning, I'd be stressed out like all the time. Yeah. yeah. I think it's so funny you bring that up because I re feel like there's such a fascination with people's morning routines. Like every <laughs> article on like Mind, Body, Green and like Well and Good, it's like, so-and-so's morning routine like the morning routines of the top 10 successful people like everyone just wants to know what everyone else is doing in the morning but yeah I, I think it like puts pressure on people too a little bit because like I said I kind of felt like well I don't love yoga so am I a bad health coach yeah. like as long as you're doing something in the morning that's not just like get up get ready for school or get ready for work and then be out the door yeah definitely I think that's yeah like I feel like and I like waking up and just kind of just knowing exactly what to do, you know, <laughs> like you yeah. have to think about it. So that's it's also the same. Yeah, it's not easy, especially now that it's getting darker in the morning. I kind of wake up. And I'm like, do I have to? Yeah. So it's nice having my routine that's the same every day. And it's it makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. So then the other thing like we wanted to ask was to say you have a bad morning. Like you gave some yeah. examples in your book, like you woke up late and you know, you're rushing out the door. Like what are some things you can do to turn your day around so the rest of your day doesn't mirror the bad morning that you had? For me, I, for one thing, I mean, you have the power to turn your day around at any time. And I know that's easier said than done. But once you sort of start realizing it and recognizing it, it becomes easier to sort of live that day, that way at you know whenever you start to feel stressed out or you know like you rushed out the door and you're wearing two different shoes that you know this <laughs> will pass and and you have the power to really shift your mindset at any point but for me I sort of pinpointed those moments throughout the day or like those little stress triggers and I think everybody should do this just take a few days in a row and sort of consciously take notice of what always seems to aggravate you and be prepared for it. So for me, I realized that that point always kind of came around noon. Like I would start the day ready to go and, you know, all like ready for anything. And then sort of midway through the day, I'd be like, okay, I'm like seeing red. Everyone's annoying me. We're not even <laughs> close to five o'clock. Um, so what I did at that point was I set a little, just a silent alarm on my phone that said, just breathe. And then every day at noon, I would get that reminder and I would be like, okay, everything's fine. Like I'm freaking out about nothing and just sort of take that few minutes and take a few deep breaths and reset. And that was actually a, it's, it sounds like such a small thing, but that was actually a really handy trick for me. That's actually such a good idea. I never even thought about doing that. I low-key do things like that. Like, I'll write notes to myself. Like, oh. if, I, if I'm, if i like, studying for a midterm and I have to wake up the next morning early and, like, uh -huh. do stuff, I'll write, like, at the bottom, like, a note, like, okay, you're fine. Like, go ace the midterm. That's you know? so smart. I never That's even thought awesome. about that. Because then you yeah. read it and you're like, oh, I'm so nice. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, that's such a good idea. That I like that. I need to start doing that. Um, so another, this is kind of a broad question, but how do we shift our mindsets about Mondays? There's this stigma around how terrible Mondays are. How do we kind of get away from that? There is a stigma around Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of things that I do to make Mondays like just as awesome as any other day of the week. First thing I do is I prepare Sunday night a little bit. I'll pick out, you know, probably not the whole week's worth of outfits, but at least two or three just to get the week going. I'll do some meal prep. This way, you know, Monday morning, I'm not thinking, okay, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? And then I always, one thing very important, always make sure that your lunch on Monday is something amazing that you're going to be looking forward to eating. Yeah. When you get to work, that's, yeah. that's yeah, obviously sitting there like, I love Monday because I really want to eat my lunch. <laughs> yeah. It's good Something idea. else that I do is um, I would always have a Monday night get together with my friends and that's just, we would laugh, you know, have wine, watch um, The Bachelor, which by the way. Yes. <laughs> into one of your episodes and I'm like, oh my God, they're Bachelor fans. <laughs> I'm, we're obsessed with so The Bachelor much. over here. So am I. Yeah. And Team next. It's I funny. love that idea. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize, but that's like what we do yeah. in our apartment. I know. Well, I realized that because The Bachelor like stopped when school started. And I was like, now I don't have anything to look forward to on Monday. Yeah. Like that was the best part of the week for me. It I, is the best part of the week. Yeah. It was, it's like kind of a good trick. Like I feel like everybody, they'll like plan something for Friday or Saturday night, but like why not plan it for Monday? You yeah. know? Like. I don't know. And when The Bachelor's not on, we do movie nights. Like, we'll watch funny movies, drink wine. We'll do, like, little spa treatments. Like, we, you know, one person will bring the sugar scrub, one person will make lotion, and and just have fun. Like, it gives you something to look forward to and a reason for Monday to be as awesome as... I, like, love that idea. Just, like, make your Monday your fun night. Yeah. Like, why not? I want to do that now. Monday's (laughs) going to be... Monday's going to be a night for us. (laughs) That's so... Yeah, that's really smart. I like that. So we want to talk. So a lot of your um, little tips and tricks are really targeted towards people in the working world. But we want to talk about it in the college context because it can all be transferred to that. Mm -hmm. And that's like what our listeners are mostly going through. Um, So, okay, just in general, do you have any tips for shifting your mindset about just college in general? Okay. Like, me, personally, I really, really hate being at college. (laughs) Like, I just really don't like it. And it's hard for me every single day. I just feel like I'm wasting my time, that I don't want to do this. I don't want to be here. And I'm... It's just a horror... I have a horrible mindset, honestly, about it. Um, Do you have any advice for me? Um... Oh, my goodness. Well, I think... (laughs) No, for like me, she's crazy. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I, I know for me, I definitely go through periods at work where I'm just like, what am I doing? Like, I want to be doing something different or I want to be somewhere else. And I think one quote that I really love, and it also took me a really long time to, I guess, really understood what it meant. But if you can't change your situation, then you have to change your relationship to it. That's like one of my f- favorite quotes. So if I'm at work or even at school, because I, you know, I went through nutrition school too, and there were some days where I was like, I have so much work to do, and I'm tired, or I want to watch TV or do something else. Um, I just, I mean, first of all, I remembered my bigger reason why, why I'm doing this, how much, how great it's going to be at the end when I finish and I can do what I want to be doing. Or I would just find like the positive in it, you know, for every sort of negative feeling I had, I would think something else that was awesome about it. Like, oh, it's only nine o'clock in the morning, but I have a really fun night planned or just, you know, remember if this too shall pass. And if you have like a home life that's really fulfilling or a work life that's really fulfilling, then you won't want to or need to think about one while you're at the other. Yeah, that's very true. I like that. All right. So um, in your book, you talk about how important it is to spend time with family and friends and yourself. 
and not to look back in 20 years realizing you spent all of your time working. So I'm totally worried about that too. (laughs) Do you have any tips for college students? I mean, I think a lot of us feel like we just don't have any spare time and we don't know how to make spare time. Like we go to class, we come home, we do homework, we go to work, we do more homework and we sleep and then we repeat. (laughs) So like how, how do we find that balance? Um, this is, this is like definitely one of my favorite topics because I can't tell you how many times I hear like, I don't have time for, you know, the gym or eating healthy or meal planning or, you know, whatever the case is. And there's definitely a big difference between having time and making time. I noticed that so many of these people also come to work or wherever every day in full hair and makeup. So like, <laughs> I have time to go get your nails done and go get your hair done every week. So it's definitely a matter of prioritizing what's important for you and keeping in mind that like, just because you can't take a full hour for the gym doesn't mean you can't do anything. And, you know, and that goes for everything. It's like a matter of realizing what's important to you and letting some things drop if you have to. And I'm also a really big fan of scheduling and list making. And I know some people are probably rolling their eyes at me right now, but I've found that taking like, I I love to do this on Monday morning. So I'll just make sort of a list of everything that I want to do from big goals to, you know, small things, my food shopping list and that kind of thing. And this way I can keep track of the things that I want to do and the things that are important to me and like getting stuck in the school and work rut won't. I won't forget about the things that I actually want to do. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I actually literally just wrote a freaking 2000 word blog post about this topic, like list making and scheduling. Cause it's the only way I get things done. And I have just so many to do lists and like, like I have mm-hmm. a weekly to do list. I have my daily to do list. I have like my general long term to do list and it just helps me organize everything so much. And like, I totally agree with you about the like, like making time like if you want to work out you have to like put it in your planner like this time I'm gonna you know you like you have to make an appointment for everything that's and, like, I think how you have to treat it like even yeah. if it's something small you need to okay that is like a class I have to do it I'm yeah. not gonna not work out or yeah. whatever it is even if it's something for yourself like I will write in my planner like I will like a lot 10 minutes to paint my nails you know I, I like I actually write down paint my nails yeah, on my planner because exactly. I'm like no you you have to do it it's a thing you have to check off your list yeah no <laughs> definitely that's marvel. like and I just think that's so helpful and I know a lot I like have so many friends who are just like I don't know how you have time to cook I don't know how I have time to work out I don't know how I have time and they're like I don't know how, I t- how you have time to make lists and I'm like well, it take five minutes to make a list that organizes you for the rest of the week. Right. And it saves you so much time later. And yeah. as far as not losing those months and years, because that's another thing. All I, oh my goodness, where did the summer go? It just flew right by. I'm like, mm-hmm. I warned you. Like, <laughs> beginning of every season, I make a list of all the things I want to do during, you know, winter, spring, summer, fall. My fall bucket list is like a mile long. Yeah. And, you know, I write it in my planner. I schedule it week by week. And this way I don't forget. And I'm not like, where did the fall go? I didn't go pumpkin picking. I didn't have my pumpkin spice latte and like all the things that are important for me in the fall. Yeah. No one. I say yeah. enough about making. I think like a big problem is that people like forget that those things should be put into your like to do list too. Like they just put down like work on this. The things that you don't want to do. Yeah. They put down, yeah, just the things that they don't want to do. And then they don't schedule in the good things too. It's like, we feel guilty for scheduling in things that we're excited about. Yeah. Which should not be the case because really people forget too. like when they get all caught up in school and work, like if you're, if you have a fulfilling life and you're happy and you're having fun, then you're more productive throughout the day and you're less stressed. And it's just really better overall for your health. Yeah, I literally cannot wake. I can't go to bed without having made my to do list for the next day because Neither. I don't like to wake up being like, what do I do? <laughs> you know, Yeah. do I have a plan? Yeah, today? I like to just look at my list and just be like, OK, that's what I'm doing right now. And then I'm just so much more productive. But yeah, that's a that's a really good point. You got to make time. Yeah. But yeah. So another thing is in your book, you talk about how it's helpful to like keep work at work and separate work and like home yeah but so in college we like have to take our work home with us to study or like 
do research, read our emails. Act, like, everything is, like, like, you go to class, but then you, like, have to at home. Like, do you have any, like, advice for applying the keeping work at work tip? Yeah. To my our setting? Advice- for that, it would be have office hours at home the same way you have school hours at work or school hours at home. Like allot yourself a certain amount of time to work on your work, have a power hour, don't let anything distract you and like get your work done and then schedule a reward for yourself afterwards. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. I should do that. Cause you have to force yourself to actually let yourself have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like recent, recently I've been like, I'll be like reading this long article and all I, I can't even focus because all I can think about is like, wow, I have to read this whole thing and then I have to read another one and then another one. And then there's just no end in sight until bedtime. Yeah. And it's so it's like, I'm not productive, but I feel like like you like if you if you have something to look forward to you're like okay i can focus right now yeah and then if i focus then i can go you know i don't know take a walk i can leave (laughs) something fun yeah you have like a ton of work to do and it's going to take you kind of more than just that power hour then have like a hard stop at like 9 p.m or something like that and be like i'm gonna do as much as i can before nine and then i'll relax for a half an hour and then i'll go to sleep or something like that Mm -hmm. yeah definitely do you have any ideas for like rewards (laughs) rewards <laughs> sure <laughs> definitely um girls night out um i mean, wind down wednesday is one of my favorites i don't know if you guys are 21 yet we are we are <laughs> wind down wednesday then is yeah. a big one. um i mean bachelor mm-hmm. night's always a fun one getting my nails done even getting my hair done sometimes going shopping, taking a walk, reading a book. Um, those are some of mine. Even something small, if I'm really, really super busy, I I love this example because even busy moms can't argue with me on this one. <laughs> you have to take a shower. So take that time and make your shower super luxurious. Like break out the fancy soaps, put on some music, light some candles, and turn that like 15 minutes, if that's all you've got, into just a really just self-loving luxurious experience yeah yeah that's a good idea i like that a lot me too. Take a bath. yeah bath. i that's love <laughs> i love a bath um and then so going back to kind of college stuff mm-hmm. do you have any tips for working in group situations in school like group projects stuff like that hmm and I'm uh, meaning like maybe you're not really a group working kind of person. Yeah, I mean, I feel like both of us have the experience in group situation. I've just had horrible group oh. project experiences. I when I like- hear the group project, I hear I have to do a lot of work yeah. for four people also. Yeah. Usually I feel like what ends up happening is like I have to do all the work, but I also get resistance from everybody else. So it's like we're all fighting but I'm still ending up doing the work and I just feel like it's really hard to do like when you have a bunch of different personalities that you usually usually don't get to pick who you're working with Mm -hmm. and you know you're like stressed out because you have this grade writing the line like Mm -hmm. one of the classes I'm taking right now the midterm and the final are both group research papers that are huge like they're huge it's a huge project and they're group papers so I'm going to be I'm I'm with these two people, these other two people. And I mean, we haven't even started, but I'm already worried about like, I know we're going to argue about how it's going to get divided up. Like who's going to do this? Oh, yeah. Who's going to do that? Like what people are going to argue about the writing styles. I just, yeah. That's yeah. I would definitely really sit down in the beginning and make a, like whoever the group leader is a strict outline of like, you're doing this, you're doing this and you're doing this. It can be super hard. Like I remember those group projects in school too. And even now in an office setting, it's like sometimes you're stuck with people who you don't necessarily want to be stuck with and just try to maybe recognize who's sort of good at what in the group. And maybe they can do, you know, that and everybody sort of stick with their strengths and then definitely make time for yourself as well. I call these introvert comas. If I'm sort of in a group setting for a little while and I feel like I need to like retreat and recharge a little bit, that definitely makes it easier for me to go back and be more tolerant of maybe letting go of control if, if I'm in a group setting and I have to like share the work with people. 
Yeah, I like that. Wait, what would you call it again? An introvert coma? Introvert coma. <laughs> That's so funny. Story of my life. I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah. But I work on a group thing now. Actually, once a week, I do a broadcast with a couple of other health coaches. And we were just talking about this last night on our broadcast. We were like, we're all so different, but we work together so well now because we've been doing it for a few weeks. And we sort of realized, like, who's good at what and who's a little quieter, me. Yeah. And <laughs> who's sort of just like we jive really well in that way and that we're all so different but we kind of really embrace that in each other so it it actually works out really well do you think it's a bad idea to like assert yourself as the group leader like I'm like the kind of person who wants to be in control and so I my instinct is just kind of like when I'm first meeting with my group kind of just like make it clear that like I'll divvy out the assignments and like I'll kind of organize everything but I feel like I feel like sometimes people (laughs) don't like if somebody else also wants to be in that role then it they won't respond yeah it won't go over well and then people are just mad at each other I mean I'm the same way I'm a total control freak if you're (laughs) I mean if you're in a group setting and more than one person wants to be the leader then definitely try and find out a way to work together on it um but Do you think de- there always it, needs to be a leader? I think somebody probably needs to say, like, you know, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. But yeah. I don't think, for me, I was always more of, like, a quiet leader. Like, I would want things sort of my way, but I was never really aggressive about it. And I actually think, look, looking back, that's gotten me pretty far. Like, even in the corporate world, I've, you know, gotten promoted a couple of times. And I was never, like, pick me, pick me. I want to, you know, I was yeah. never outwardly aggressive about you know wanting to do well and succeed I just sort of did it in like a quiet way yeah that's probably I mean I guess I could be subtle (laughs) a little more subtle but is it bad to assert yourself absolutely not own it yeah I did that this morning literally this morning (laughs) I had a meeting for a group project and I was like all right so (laughs) this is how we're gonna do it right (laughs) no one cared but yeah I don't know (laughs) Just I mean, depends. if you're lucky, everyone's, like, thankful that somebody's taking charge. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because I do feel like, I feel like it doesn't work if nobody takes charge. Because no. everybody, it's too just, passive. like, somebody has to just, like, say something, yeah. you know, to get the ball rolling. Yeah, exactly. So. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, so, another thing you talk about in your book is how sitting for long periods of time isn't good for us. And... I just, can you expand on that and maybe give some tips for people on how to be more active during the day? Yeah, I actually read recently somewhere, sitting is the new smoking. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it was so real. I was like, oh my God, that's terrifying. But it's true. Like, I've read, I have so many studies that saying a sedentary lifestyle is bad for your health. Like, if you're sitting in class all day or you're sitting at your desk all day bad for your health in the long run it's bad for your heart and they also say that even working out at the end of the day isn't enough to reverse it like you actually have to move throughout the day yeah that's what I was I was just saying last podcast that my professor my professor was telling us that um if you don't get your 7,000 steps in a day that's the same health risk as smoking two packs of cigarettes a day it's crazy like it's insane that is, it's scary when you think of it like that. Yeah. Oh my, gosh. Um, my rule of thumb is to move around as much as possible, but definitely at least five minutes an hour. Um, obvious ones would be park further away from the building, um, take those stairs instead of the elevator. If you're in school, you know, maybe walk, um, you know, walk back and forth through the hall or take the long way to the next building. Um, just definitely keep walking as much as you can take maybe 10 minutes in the morning, like get to class a little early, walk around the building a couple of times. I always um, take my break and I walk for 30 minutes and I just sort of eat beforehand. Yeah. I really Uh, liked that tip. Like, I mean, it doesn't really apply to me right now while I'm in school, but for people who haven't read the book yet, like she says, like to eat her lunch before the lunch break and then during lunch break take that time to walk yeah yeah or i was gonna say walk over to a coworker, but i guess that doesn't really apply in school either but just <laughs> or walk over to the coworker instead of calling or use the bathroom on another floor mm-hmm. you know in your yeah. in your building in school yeah i think that's something that also like 
I, I think Kaylin thinks I'm really weird because I do all my work standing up. <laughs> Like I actually do that too. Yeah. I, and now that I've gotten at first, it was really weird for me, but now that I've gotten the habit, I just like can't sit down. Like I get really antsy when I sit down now. Um, I do. Yeah. And I'm, I think I mentioned this in my book too. I was like, you might feel weird at first, but probably nobody even notices that you're standing up anyway. Cause they're all looking at their own stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, get a standing desk from Amazon, guys. <laughs> I got, yeah, I got one for like 30 bucks on Amazon and it's sitting out here. Really? But yeah. Like, not like a full on, it's like just like a little table that you sit on and the, like the legs extend so you can make it as tall as you want. Oh, wow. That's pretty neat. Yeah. So it's like helpful if, if your table is not tall enough. <laughs> yeah, but, it usually won't be. And I also like another thing you can do is, okay, like, one of my like rewards for myself is like <laughs> checking social media, but while I'm checking social media, I'll walk. So mm -hmm. like I'll do work for X amount of minutes that I've mm -hmm. told myself and then I'll be like, Oh, I can check my social media, but I'll literally like walk in circles around the apartment if I can't leave the apartment or I'll, or I'll like actually walk outside mm -hmm. and while I'm checking my social media, you know, so I'm still like moving for a few minutes during my like little breaks. Um, I think it's so important to have rewards. Like I um, sometimes get lazy about going to the gym. And when I say sometimes, I mean most of the time. <laughs> and one of my um, one of my little rewards for myself is like, okay, I'll go to the gym and then I'll get to sit in the sauna. For, well, actually sit in the sauna first. But that's my reward for myself. Like I love to just go and lay in the sauna and just relax. And that's like my reward for actually going to the gym. Yeah, that's a good, that's that's a a good, good idea. One, Do you yeah. have any other, like people always ask us, how we have motivation to work out. Do you like have any tips to give people? Um, my main motivation when I first started working out is just the fact that I was doing it. I mean, I couldn't run for anything. When I first <laughs> and so I downloaded this program that got me running for like 30 seconds at a time and then walking for 30 seconds on and off. And then as I started getting better, I just got like kind of addicted to how much I was improving and I wanted to keep going. So I would be like, okay, I'm going to see if I can run all the way to like that next stop sign and, and just keep setting like small goals for myself and, um, what else did I do? I mean, when I first, when I ran my first 5k, it was just like the happiest day for me. Cause I was, and it was fun too. And that's another thing. Like if it's fun, that's, that's huge yeah. with working. It's like running is not for everybody, but maybe some people like yoga or swimming or dancing. So that's important, you know, to find something that's actually fun for you. You should not hate working out. Yeah, I wanted to mention that because also like if you find something that's fun for you, then you can use that like that is your reward. People yeah. are like, people are like, I don't get how you like motivate yourself to go. And I'm like, that is like it. That's my reward. It's not like I'm, I have to, I don't have to have a reward to get myself to work out. Working out is my reward right. because I enjoy it. You yeah. Know? Like that's what I'll like, I have that to look forward to in the afternoon. Like that's my break. Like that's my <laughs> me time, you know? So I think that like a lot of people have it twisted. Like I feel like if you, it's like if you haven't found what you like, then you feel like it's torture. Yeah, punishment. Yeah, but once you just find something that you like, then it's it's not torture, and then it's you don't need any extra motivation. You just want to do it because it's fun. Right. Yeah, and if you have friends to do it with, or if you make friends in the process, it's like yeah, it's yeah, so Definitely. much more. Yeah. So this next question is it's a little loaded, but. Um, <laughs> Do you think that positive attitude changes are enough to make up for a passionless work life? Um, yes and no. I mean, I think if you have a positive attitude, you know, you can bring a little more passion to the job you're in. I know for me, um, people always told me throughout my life because I, I tend to be really creative and like everything I get my hands on, I kind of have to make cute. <laughs> I love that. Or, or something. And I work in a banking job, which is the anti-creative environment. Yeah. Um, but I would still like decorate my cubicle. And so for me, that was just, I made my, and at home too, my, um, my work environment is really, really inviting for me. So I sort of bring that level of passion to the job in a way. But I mean, if you're really, really genuinely in a passionless job, I mean, there's no shame in looking for another one. Yeah. Um, figuring out what, and I'm not saying like quit your job and go, you know, eat, pray, love around the world. Yeah. But, um, 
I think for me, I didn't even know what a health coach was until I was almost 30. So, I mean, there's still plenty of time to find your passion. Yeah. Just keep looking for it and don't settle for for anything, really. A job, you know, a, a major that's not going to fulfill you and make you happy. Yeah, we talk about that a lot. Like, I mean, it's here, a slope. so many people here are just pursuing majors just because they feel like they have to just mm-hmm. because they think that job's going to get them money. And people will be like, I hate this, but I need to make money. And I'm just like, well, then why are you? I just think that's such a horrible uh, reason. You know? It is sad that, that people feel hopeless that, you know, they have to go down the path that they're going. There, there's a quote that I love. Um, I'm thinking of it offhand, so I hope I get it right. But it's like, if you're not happy with your situation, move. You are not a tree. Oh, my like, God. I like that. <laughs> That's so perfect. It's like easier said than done. But at the same time, it's like if you if you're looking ahead five years and you don't want to be in the same place that you are now, you have to make changes. Yeah. Even small ones. Uh, yeah. That's so true because, I feel, yeah, I feel like so many of us, like, I mean, I do this too. Like, I complain and I could change it. <laughs> Yeah. Like, but I just keep complaining instead of just like changing. I'm like, what am I waiting around for? Like, you know, yeah. like just do something Divine else. Divine intervention. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, it's, even if it's something and small changes are the way to go. Like, don't, you know, don't try to overhaul your whole lifestyle all in one shot. But like, if you get really, really clear on where you think you want to be, even like just say three months from now, you don't even have to think long term, you know, figure out exactly where you want to be, get crystal clear on it and then figure out what do I have to do to get there and break it down into super small steps and then just take one, you know, do your daily action, make your weekly goal list and just stick with it and stay committed. And in time, in a very short amount of time, you'll start to see results in whatever area you're looking to make changes in. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good tip. So Okay. If you had to pick one, do you think that having a happy home life or a happy work life contributes more to people's overall happiness? Probably a healthy home life. Because yeah. I think if you have a really fulfilling home life and you have people to go home to and like a really good support system, whether it be your friends or your family or whoever, um, I think that you'll carry that into work. Yeah, I yeah. think that's, I agree with that. I don't yeah. believe in, you know, like devoting all of your energy and all of your time and all of your life into your job yeah. because you know like I said like at the end of your life like you're not going to remember all the moments that you had at work like you're going to remember the moments that you spent with your family and your friends and the, the moments you were home and happy or you know doing something with your loved ones yeah, yeah. I totally agree with that and like okay so like at the beginning of the, your book you say you kind of started off by saying you spent all of college yeah working (laughs) and so like so do you really like regret that I I regret I mean I I hate to use the word regret because if I hadn't done things that way then I wouldn't be in the you know I my life wouldn't be the way it is now I'm very happy with how everything turned out for me but I definitely think it's a bummer that I don't have like any fun college memories I don't have any pictures from college or friends from college and I don't really remember any of my teachers names like I never went to a game or joined a club or anything like that and that's sad like those are important years to have fun as well as study which I didn't even do much of either because I was working because I thought as you said with your friends I thought if I concentrate on work and if I go full time and I try to get a promotion then like this is going to be my path and I'll make a lot of money and I'll be successful and I won't have to worry yeah but you know I mean, at the time, like as it was happening, did you, did you feel like you're missing out? Like while you were working and other people were going to games and hanging out and doing stuff and going to clubs, like at the time, did you think that or was it not until later? I think it wasn't until later. I think I was so focused on like, I got to get out of class because I have to go to work or if maybe I can afford to skip a class so I can work another shift. Like looking back, I think I didn't realize it until later on how much I missed out on. So like, so what would you have done differently? I think I would have not gone full time when I did. I mean, I know, um, I know sometimes you have to, and that's an unfortunate fact that sometimes people just have to balance a full time course load with a full time workload. But the truth is, I really didn't. I just did it because I was offered the opportunity to. So I thought that I should, because I didn't want to say no. And I thought, you know, if I work, 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 
I'll be really successful. And um, if I could do it differently, I would work part time or maybe I wouldn't work at all. And I would focus on school more, try to make some friends, join a club. Maybe really, I also was one who sort of just majored in business because I thought that I had to or I thought that I should. But maybe I would have taken the time to sort of find something that I jived with a little bit better. Yeah. Do you have any, like, I think one of the things that's really hard for me is like, in college at least, is like maintaining a work like a a school balance and a friend's balance, yeah. you know? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I have such a hard time trying to figure out because I just feel like, I feel like school is my priority. I mm-hmm. think that's, that's my problem is because of all, like growing up my whole life, like school comes first. Yeah. If you're not putting your all into school, you can't go off and like spend time with friends. You know, yeah. like school was always the top priority. But I find myself, because there's always like, there's always there's always work so it's like i just i'll go through a whole week and i'll be a hermit and i'll literally just be doing work 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 and i won't have seen anyone and like that's something that i like in middle school in high school and all through college something i had such a hard time with i feel like i haven't made enough time for my friends and and i don't i don't know i don't know how to how to do that i guess I would definitely, just like we talked about scheduling time for yourself, I would schedule time with your friends, even if it's just once a week, which now, I mean, I, I see my friends once a week, which I think is even more than a lot of people who are my age now see their friends anyway. Yeah. But definitely scheduling that time to kick back and relax. Like I know I feel so much better and less stressed and more relaxed after I hang out with my friends for a little while. And I go back to my work with like, you know, a renewed energy and that does, that's really important. Like if you're studying and studying and studying, you'll start to feel like you're just spinning your wheels and you, you need that downtime to relax and laugh and have fun. And you'll find that you're at least as productive, if not more than if you had used that time to study. Yeah. I think it also, and be, it's hard because it also goes like on the other side of the pendulum. Like I know we have listeners who are the opposite. Like they're in college, but they are just partying with their friends 24-7 and spending, like, like not even going to class, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's just hard for all of us to figure out what the right balance is. Like, is once a week good enough? Am I still going to feel like that wasn't enough? You know, is, yeah. like, how much time goes to school? How much time goes to this? It's so hard when it's not... Like, I feel like once... That's why I feel like I look at people like my parents who have like a structured job, like work hours. And I'm like so jealous because that's not how it is when you're in school. Like work hours are all the time. And so it's kind of like it's really hard to define how much time I feel like I have a hard time deciding how much time can I have for myself. I can't compartmentalize. Yeah. I I think it's definitely different for everybody. And one thing that I like to do maybe every, I don't know, three months, maybe every six months, depending on where I'm at, I I sort of, I have this like chart that has, it separated, it looks like a pie chart and it's separated into little sections. Um, There's one for career, finances, education, creativity, spirituality, nutrition, physical fitness, relationships. I know I'm missing a few. There's like 10 or 12 of them. And you just sit there and you sort of mark like on a scale from one to 10, where do you feel like you're at in the area of um, your friends and your social life or your relationships with your family or um, your finances, your career. And then you look at it and you see like, where did you score the highest and where did you score the lowest? And then where you score the lowest are the areas that you need to like work on. And that's how, you know, like what areas you focusing on too much, what areas do you still need work on? For me, I usually find, um, that it's like finances. I think I'm always sort of on the low side and probably career comes up every now and then. Like I, I feel like I'm not always fulfilled in my career, my, my day job. Yeah. I think that's such a good idea. I want to do that. (laughs) I want to make a a pie chart. Yeah. (laughs) And I think it's true, like, it is different for every person. Like, Mm -hmm. I know for me, like, I, like, too much time with other people stresses me out. Because I am, I like to be by myself, you know? But I do need to make sure I do have time to see other people. Otherwise, I go psycho and I miss my friends. Yeah. And I, yeah. Um, But I, yeah, I think you're definitely right about how it's just kind of, like, figuring out 
what the individual needs. Yeah, like what you... Yep. Everyone. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like so many of us just, like, want a formula. Like, we just want, like, an answer. Like, <laughs> tell me... To do spend, that. Yeah, X, hour, X hours on this, Y hours yeah. on this, like, and I'll just and do it. And you'll be fulfilled. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not that easy, no, you know? It's, it's just yeah. kind of, like... There's really no right or wrong because it's like what works for you. Yeah, it's hard. Exactly. Um, so each chapter in the book that we read kind of focuses on different strategies to making your life more positive. So mm-hmm. which one of those strategies do you think has been the most important in your own life? Um, as far as the working world or just life in general? <laughs> life in general. Yeah, life in general. Um, I think definitely creating that um, work-life balance was huge for me because I, I there came a point for me where I realized that my work was affecting my home life too much. Like I would come home and I would be asked, you know, how was your day? And every day my answer would be something really negative or I'd be in a bad mood. And like one day I finally realized how would I feel if I were on the receiving end of all that negativity? Yeah. And like we spend, you know, 40 plus hours or even more you know, studying and being at work and going back and forth to school or work and preparing, you know, meal prep, picking out outfits, you know, everything else we do to prepare for the day. And that was huge for me trying to actually finally figure out how to focus more on my home life and check my work life or your school life at the door and focus on, you know, nurturing my relationships and having more of a social life. And that was really, really huge for me. And that helped me in my work life, too, because once I started feeling happier at home and allowing myself to feel happier at home and spending more time on myself, I was happier at work. Yeah, Yeah. I think that's such a key, like how you're saying you allow yourself to be happy at home. Like, because I notice that, too, sometimes I'll like I'll have something to look forward to, like I hang out with my friends, but I'm not (laughs) fully there. Like, I feel guilty while I'm hanging out. Like, I need to be home. Like, yeah doing work you know I'm not I'm not letting myself just enjoy it and then you ruin it for you You, yeah no I totally do it's so important because while school is so important and work is so important it's like it's those it's those moments you have outside of school and work that are gonna create the lasting memories and that are just ultimately really important yeah I think that's really true so are you like I don't know how to phrase this. Are you like a self talker? Like, do you talk a lot to yourself? Like, (laughs) like I'm trying to figure out, like, how do you make those mindset shifts? Like, you know, like what exactly are you doing to like tell yourself? I'm a thinker. Okay. My mind is going 24 seven. Just my wheels are always, always turning. And I think I make a face when I'm really involved (laughs) in my brain like I'll just zone out I won't talk to anybody and just like my wheels will be turning yeah but I also have quotes like I have a vision board at home I have a vision board at my desk at work and it's got all these quotes that I just love on it like I'm looking at my vision board it's right in front of me now um one of the quotes I have one that says dream bigger um who doesn't love a little sparkle um and then I have two um like excerpts from songs that are backed on like this really pink uh, really pink this really sparkly (laughs) pink paper um, one is from the song Roar by Katy Perry and the other is from Fight Song. So those are, this is like my fierce fab female board. And it really, like whenever I'm feeling like down and I need a boost just on my own, I just yeah. look at my board. I love that. We should make, we should make one of those, Kayla. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> I also, that remind me of something else you said in your book about like having a song or two that just like pumps you up and makes you happy. <laughs> and like, that's another good thing for, um, like, moving throughout the day. Like, turn on your song and just, like, dance it out for a few minutes. You like, know? I really love that. That, like, I feel like that revives you. My favorite things. And, I mean, my power song is constantly changing, but I always have a power song that yeah. just, like, instantly puts me in a better mood. Yeah. I, like, that's all. Do you watch Grey's Anatomy? Yeah. I stopped watching after they killed off, uh... <laughs> Uh, McDreamy. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I should have, but I I don't know why I'm still loyal. But no, like, my growing up, like, that was one of my best friends and my, like, our favorite show. And we'd, like, you know, like, Christina and Meredith dance it out when they're, like, upset. Yeah. And so, yeah, I love it. Yeah. We would always do that. Like, when I, whenever I'm, like, there'll be times when I'm just so angry, I'm so sad, I'm so upset, and I'll just, like, 
turn on my jam and just literally just dance it out, like <laughs> dance out my anger, and then you feel so much better. Much better. Yeah. So I really like that. I want to make I want to make a quote board. That sounds very helpful. <laughs> and make it like fun and pretty and like something you really enjoy looking at. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I think you gave so much helpful advice. I'm so happy we got to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. Yeah, I wish we had longer, but I feel like it's already been almost an hour. So I will we'll let you get back to the rest of your day. But thank you so much for all of your advice. Thank you. Yeah, it was amazing. So we'll be in touch. And thanks again. And have a great day. You too. All right. Bye. 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 Okay. There you have it. Yeah, that was really... She's so sweet. That was awesome. She was really nice. Yeah, I feel like she gave some really good tips. She did. Even for us, we're like the organization schedule queen. Yeah, I I felt like I was kind of like, I was like, can you like help me figure out my life? I know. A lot of those questions, (laughs) I was like, I'm listening. Yeah, I know. I was like, I want you just to like kind of be my therapist right now. But (laughs) no, that was amazing. So big thanks to Kimberly for talking to us. I like that one a lot. I love me some health coaching. Um. So, yeah, as usual, if you liked this, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tell your family, your friends, everyone, your, I don't know, your roommates, your Uber driver, your cat, (laughs) your dog. Yeah, tell your Uber driver. Um, Also, you should send in any questions you want us to talk about. You can send them in at actuallyadultish at gmail.com or you can go to actuallyadultish.com. You should also like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash actuallyadultish. You should follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at actuallyadult. You should just like be talking to us all the time. We love to hear back from you and we love feedback. And make sure you give us a five-star rating. Cause Please. Five. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You can write whatever you want. Just give us five. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. But not really. Okay. Yeah. So thanks for listening. And we will talk to you again next week. Bye. Bye.